Yes, hi. Teddy Bear says hello. Teddy Bear sends his love. Um, he just loves it when I talk. Uh, Benji is underneath my feet eating a cookie. Uh, <laughs> he likes to savor them. Good morning. Happy 4th of July Eve or the 3rd of July. <laughs> um, this is Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue. And I'm here for today's program, which we're officially renamed to Crafting Adventures with Miss Reader and Friends. And uh, today's crafting adventure is going to take us on a journey about using some old images in Design Space. I was thinking about this uh, image set. It's called Teddy Bear Parade and it's so cute. And there are so many really darling images and I thought this time of year, maybe somebody was gonna have a pool party or something and they needed some kind of a fun invitation or whatever, so I used this. But I wanna show you a bunch of other images. But before I do that, I will say hello to all my friends. Hello, Tammy. Hi, Cheryl, Erin. There's Gail, Dawn, Hope. Elizabeth, Debbie, did I say Debbie? <laughs> I think I said Tammy. And then there's my friend Mama Bear. And um, did I say Elizabeth? Good morning. We've got a full house this morning and I wanna show you um, how to do shaped cards. Uh, I know we did one last week, but I just think this is such a great technique and it's a way to transform a lot of those flat images that you have into something like a card. So I wanna show you how to do that. Now that doesn't mean, hi Donna, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, I had to get a, a sip of a drink. Now that doesn't mean that these have to be flat um, or that you can't use them for some other reason, but there are a lot of images in design space such as these that are just perfect to make into a card. So I wanna show you how to do that. Let me come back up here. Oh, <laughs> you shaped it into a uterus? <laughs> All right, so here we go. There is one image, but let me show you all the others. I think there's 30 different cho to choose from. Um, in this cartridge, it was originally a cartridge. Now it's called an image set. And we're going to, I'm just being reminded by my computer that it's Independence Day. Of course I know that. Um, all right, so we're gonna go to images, all images, and we're gonna do my favorite thing, which is go to image sets. Image sets right here under highlighted categories at the bottom, image sets. So if you are somebody who um, knows about this because you had a crick, a corgi, a cricket, a cricket that would do um, cartridges. This is kind of old school. I'm kind of old school. So um, this is how I look for images in design space. There are other ways to look, but this happens to be my favorite way. And so I'm going to click on image sets. Now I know that this particular image set is called Teddy Bear Parade. So I'm just going to type in the word Teddy. Okay, and you'll see there's only one cartridge or image set that comes up and it's called Teddy Bear Parade. And I, I made a mistake, there are 50 images in this. So there's something for everyone, especially if you like teddy bears. <laughs> um, I've used these to put, uh, to make cupcake toppers. I've used them for decorations and uh, also for cards, I've done the Thanksgiving and the Christmas one. So you can see there's quite a few. There's Halloween, there's um, Thanksgiving, there's back to school. We did this back to school one a couple years ago. And then of course you get your blank Teddy if you want to come up with something other than what's in here. But look at, they've got New Year's and Easter, St. Patrick's Day, there's summer, there's fall, there's winter. I think there's winter. Maybe that's the one that's not covered. There's got to be a winter. Uh, is there no winter? 
well, I get there's a Christmassy one. So anyway, um, I love my favorite is the teddy bear in the bee costume. That's my favorite. I don't know what your favorite is, but there are quite a few here that you can use for for the summertime, which is what I've done here today. So look at this one. There's a teddy bear with a camera holding a tropical drink. We could use that one. This is the one that I used for for the demo today. It's a teddy bear with a rubber ducky flotation device. Um, where are some others that we've got? Um, there's a, ha a Hawaiian girl. And look at this one with, this is more me with the, with the swim cap on and everything. So I just will bring you in, bring these in here. Now they come in a little small. And I do want to say that they do have quite a bit of, um, of different pieces to them. So if you go ahead and hit ungroup, which is up here, remember, um, you can see, let's have a look at our little Hawaiian girl. So she has yellow and red. She has the lei, which I guess you do in like a light pink or something. Here are her belly, that's her nose, and there it's like this you see so this it's it's a really a paper piecing thing um that you're going to put together so how do you make something like this into a card well the simplest way if you ask me um is to do a what is called um an offset or a shadow layer um oh there's my friend christiana hello um yes i still i still wear a swim cap um yeah, I do. I do. I still wear some cap. Okay, so from these images, now these images are small. If you're going to cut these out small, they're, you're going to need some like uh, tweezers or to be very careful with your glue because when they're small, there are a lot of little pieces. So what I like to do with these is um, turn them into cards. So let me just get rid of these guys and you can see what I'm gonna do. So this is what I did, I turned it into a card. So all I needed to do here was come up here to offset, okay? And I'm gonna just use the uh, set parameters, which is a quarter of an inch. And that means a quarter of an inch all the way around here, okay? And then we choose the cornered and we're gonna choose weld offsets. It's already selected for us, so we just hit apply. Now, sometimes this doesn't work 100%, and this is an example of it not working 100%. You see there are all these little pieces that are not filled in when we really just want them as like a shadow layer, so we don't need these cutouts. So when we have this situation, we're gonna come down here to what's called contour. It's at the very bottom, and it looks like a dashed circle. So you're gonna click on that, and the easiest way to do this is just to choose hide all contours and then X out, and now all of a sudden it's all one piece. You see that? So now we have the front of the car, basically, that's gonna go behind our adorable swimmerette here, but we need to create the actual fold bit of the card. So we're going to duplicate it, again, up here. So duplicate. Now, if we were to put these two together just like this, it, there's a very good possibility that they will, um, it will come out wrong because we need to flip the front part of, or the other part of the image. I don't say the front part because it's the front or the back. So we need to do up here under flip. All right, and we're gonna choose flip horizontal. All right, you notice that the image is different because she's got on in her hand, she's got this little, I don't know what it is. A, maybe it's a, you know what? I think it's a water polo ball. That's what I think it is. I'm, I was kind of like, what is she holding? I think it's a water polo ball. Okay, so now we have these two pieces and we're gonna sort of touch them together, not by a lot. We're just gonna overlap them a tiny bit just to create that card with the with the fold, okay? Now, to make sure that these two are exactly the same height or they're on the same plane, so to speak, you're gonna create a uh, group these or grab them, see, just grab like this, and then you're gonna hit align, and you do align bottom, 
okay? This is going to allow that those images are perfectly aligned at the bottom so that when we put them together, they're not gonna be all wobbly, okay? So without touching anything, after you've aligned um, the bottom, you're gonna come down here to combine. Now, when you click on that down arrow of combine, you can choose weld, all right? And when you weld it, you'll notice that those lines, those cut lines have disappeared. Now, because this is a summer uh, card, let's go ahead and change this color to white so you can sort of see. But you see how they're attached right here? Now, to you, this would fold fairly easily, but if you are really concerned about the folding part, you can go to shapes and choose the top one on the left-hand side. It's a score line. Okay, you can pull the score line over and you can make it as long as you need it to be. So see, I made it as long as I needed to be right at that fold. And when I'm done with that, I am going to select them all and then come back here over here to attach. Now we have our card and I'm just gonna change Send this to the front. Okay, so there's our card. It's going. This is the back of the card, but in this case, uh, I believe that we could. Could we? No. So in this case, right? Um, if we fold it, where if we cut it this way and we fold it this way, this would be the front of the card. You see how it nice, perfectly sets like that. But because I was thinking, well, why don't we have a little. Uh, pool party invitation. I'm still now I'm going to have to go ahead and flip this again. So let's see uh, if I flip this again, this nope, I got to flip it. Sorry, I always get confused here. Nope, not vertical. All right, flip horizontal. Okay. So there is there is that my am, am I confusing myself? Yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> because I want for the um, the invitation bet to be on the inside and I'm thinking that it's not going to work unless it's over here on this side but the other side of it. So I kind of want to flip it over but I'm having a hard time. Let me see if I do it this way. Nope, it doesn't want to do that. Uh, I might be just messing myself up. I put, could possibly, but all right, let's say I can't figure this out and I want to do an invitation. What I can do is I can go ahead and duplicate this image. Now I'm going to go ahead and combine and weld all of them. So now that I have that, I have sort of this bit here on the inside. You see that? That's going to be on the inside right? I might be confusing myself, but anyway, this could be our little invitation piece. And then we can go ahead and hit text and we can write whatever, come to our pool party, to our pool party. Oh, how about we say our 4th of July pool party? All right, and then we just say 2 p.m. or something. Okay, so this is going to be the little sort of invitation. Obviously, it's too big, so we need to come up here to font. We're going to click on that Cricut Sands. Hi, Bren. Um, and we're going to look at all the fonts. Now, I think a lot of people shy away from fonts, and then they get their own that are that are sort of their favorites. I am no different. One of my new favorites is this um, is this group called BFC. I don't know what it stands for. I'm sure it's right. Okay. Um. Oh. Christiana, she's doing a, a party and uh, like a, she showed me some things last night that was really kind of fun. She's working on like a, a baby shower party. So she's looking for some ideas. 
and gold left side. Won't that be the inside? That's what I was thinking, Cheryl, right? So anyway, we're, we're on to fonts. Okay, so one of the great font groupings that I've noticed here is called BFC. I'm not really sure what it stands for, but I think it stands for something. And if you look, there are quite a few of these. There's um, all the way up from here, the block toys. Look, P blueberry pancake, boyfriend jeans, bright Christmas, bubble bath. There's one that I like that's like chicken stacked. This one here, chicken stacked, really cute. Um, and what I'm looking for is one that has a writing under here. You see here it says single layer and then it says writing. I want a writing one because I want to write my little invitation on the inside of my card. So I'm going to choose this one which is BFC Cornbread Snacks because it has, in addition to single layer, it has writing. And I am going to actually bookmark this. When I bookmark it, I'm going to choose this, right? But when I bookmark it, if you go to the top, you'll see that we have bookmarks. These are all my favorite fonts that are bookmarked. So if you have your favorite fonts, you can go ahead and save them. This is a fairly new addition. Um, if you have something that you have downloaded, like a font from the internet that's not part of Design Space, you can also look at just system fonts. Now, these would be all the fonts that came with my computer, but also any ones that I uploaded. So here is one that I uploaded called American Horror Story because um, I was making mugs for Haunted Happenings in Salem, and that's just perfect. Everybody loves and identifies with that uh, American Horror Story font. But then there's also typewriter because I really am old fashioned and I love that old fashioned type. So um, there's that. And then you, of course you can just look at the Cricut ones or you can now do recent. So recent, you'll know what's on your canvas. This is a huge change for um, most people who have been using the fonts and using Cricut Design Space, okay? So this is really, um, this has really been good. So, all right, so here is our come to our 4th of July pool party. I think I'll change this color to that blue because kind of fun, but you notice it's still a cut font. So we need to come up here. You see where it says operation basic cut and then the style is regular. I'm gonna switch the style to writing and then you'll see the operation goes to pen. Isn't that great? So now all I have to do is somehow figure out how this is going to be um, located here. So uh, let's see. I think what I can do. I think that's good. Come to our 4th of July pool party, 2 p.m. And then maybe we need to add an address. So let's go ahead and add an address. One uh, Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> I don't know. Sunset Boulevard, Peabody. Mass. And um, then I started thinking, wow, this is really taking up a lot of space. So once I do that, I need to um, come up with something different. So I think the come to our 4th of July pool party should be pretty big. And then the directions and the time should be smaller, right? So if I want to do that, what I have to do is I have to go to advanced and I need to ungroup two lines, okay? When I ungroup two lines, each line of our text is separate. So now I can play around with the space between each line and I can also play around with placement and um, and also size if we wanted to. So here is here's the inside of the card. It says come to our 4th of July pool party. Now I probably want to make this slightly smaller. So the 2 p.m. I'm going to go up here to font size. I'll just change it to it's at 45. So I'm going to change it to 30 and then I'll do the same thing with this. 30 seems fine. So let's go ahead and click on font size. Whoops, I did two. 30. 30. Okay. So, I mean, because most people know where you live, right? But you just want to remind them. And so we're making it slightly smaller. Plus, you want to leave a little tiny space for you to write on there and say, make sure you bring your sunscreen or something kind of cute like that. And once you've gone ahead and done that, you're going to, 
Let me just make sure I move these all to exactly where I want it. Come to our pool party. Before there's like a pool party, please, how about we say please come? Because I want to say that. So I'm going to say P-L-E-A-S-E, -E, come, please come. Now I've messed it up a tiny bit, which is fine. So I'm going to align, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to advanced, ungroup to lines again. And I've got please come to our 4th of July pool party. I'm gonna leave a little space there. Now, once we have the lettering and the spacing exactly the way that we want it, and it's like right there centered on the inside of our card, I'm going to select everything and I'm going to choose attach. Attach, again, remember, is down here. It's a paper clip. So when I cut this out, um, this is gonna go on the inside of our card, you see? because it's going to match the inside of the card. This is what we were talking about. Um, and this is gonna go on the outside of the card. So basically what I did was I created the inside that is a separate piece. So I don't have to worry about this flipping, if that makes sense to people, okay? So when we're ready, we can go ahead, I'm just gonna group this all together and I'm gonna hide my little swimmy bear one. And let's go ahead and hit make it well if you're having a party you probably oh wait a second i want to go back before i do that all right <laughs> once i've done that i'm going to ungroup sorry before we cut it out i want to just do some talk about the size a little bit so here's our card and i'm putting it together so that the, all the pieces are on top of each other and now i want to figure out the size okay so right here you'll see the width is 11.2 which is rather large for a card i normally make my cards about five by seven that's kind of a standard another standard in the card baking circles is for an a2 this is an a7 a7 fits a normal regular envelope it's called a7 it's a five by seven inch card there's a little bit of room all around it and you're gonna you can buy yourself a bunch of envelopes that's what i do um i don't make a whole lot of envelopes but anyway do i need it to fit in the envelope yes i do and at this point it's not going to fit you know why because the width is 11.2 inches so um i need it to be able to fit into a five by seven inch envelope so I'm going to change that width to 10. When I do that, as long as it is, uh, it's still locked, it will change my height to 6.877. If I want it to be exactly 5 by 7, I could unlock this and change the height to 7. Then just make sure you relock it. So now I have a card that is going to fit into an envelope. There's nothing worse than having a card that doesn't fit into the envelope that you selected. All right? So I'm going to hit make it. Now, as I mentioned, um, there there are a lot of little pieces. So here we've got, there's the bathing suit. There's her little, um, her goggles and part of her towel. And there is the volleyball. Um, and then there's our insert. There's the card pieces. You're going to cut all of these out, which is what I did. Um, and if you wanted more, you could just hit apply and add the number of project copies. Maybe you want to make five. Now, in this case, I would use eight and a half by 11 inch white cardstock, which I've told you, um, it's Cricut doesn't sell, but Michael sells it and I buy it a lot for our for making cards eight and a half by 11 inch card stock and um you want to know about uploading fonts yeah we can do that we can do that um okay what size did I make the bear so the bear in terms of the size of the bear in this case my bear is eh, it's just under five inches wide right and that's because I resized it, you see. So here we go. We're going to cut them all out. Let's pretend that we cut all the pieces out because there's really nothing super fancy about that. And then we'll put together our, um, our rubber ducky swim 
one. So pretend that the invitation piece is on the inside. So there is what we got and isn't it adorable? So if you wanted to just send it to somebody, maybe you have a grand that loves to go swimming and you want to send them a happy summer card, this is really it. Uh, also remember for this image set, there are tons of options. So if you wanted to, to send a Halloween card or a Thanksgiving card or whatever the case may be, then you can find it in the Teddy Bear Parade image set. Okay, so let's have a look at this and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you a couple of things. Hopefully I can show you about fonts. Okay, so there is our card and we're going to fold it. Hey Shirley, how are you? Nice to see you, honey. Um, so we're gonna fold it, and if you want, you crease it right there on that on that page. And if you're using cardstock, say for Cricut, I just want to point this out. So this is Cricut cardstock. And it's got a textured side to it, but on the other side, it's very um, it's very smooth. And generally speaking, the textured side is the right side, but obviously it matters how you put it on to the mat. So I put it on this way of textured side up because I knew that I wanted the texture to be on the outside of the card, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's put together our little bear here. He's got all these little pieces. Aren't they adorable? I made this uh, for several things. I remember doing some for my son's uh, preschool or kindergarten, um, and we made like little turkeys because they didn't want us to get for thanksgiving they didn't want us to give candy and i always i'm a kind of a i used to send everything in you know that sort of thing so let's put together the um the ducky first where's my glue so the dock is it's got this black piece on the background and make sure that you're putting the glue on the correct side because see this is the correct side this is incorrect you see how it doesn't line up here so make sure before you go ahead and glue it that you've got the right side facing. We're gonna flip it over and put ourselves a little bit of glue. Not a lot of glue because it will come seeping out all the different areas and we don't want that. So here we go. I'm gonna pick this up and put this on so that it's correct. He needs his little bill but look how his eyes are in there. We don't have to deal with the eyes. This is this is because um, it's an old image. If this were a new image, we'd probably be dealing with centering little eyes on there. But um, back in the day when they created these, they knew that people would be having trouble with the eyes issue. So they just kind of uh, made a shadow layer underneath, which I like. I like that kind of an image. You'll also see there are little cuts on here to show the placement of um, the pieces. I like that too. So here we go. There is our adorable ducky. Now let's put together the teddy bear and put on his costume. So here's the teddy bear. And we're going to see, so this is the front side. You see all these little cuts here? That's just to indicate where each piece is going to go, each piece of our little cutout. I love when they do images like this because sometimes placement can be a little bit of a difficult situation, right? So there we go. So it's awful quiet in my house. I cannot believe how quiet it is here. Last night, Mom and I had a little movie. We actually, the last two nights, we had a little movie marathon. Uh, what did we watch last night? Last night, we watched My Big Fat Greek Wedding and Mermaids. And what else did we watch? Oh, I know. We watched quite a few videos. The other day, I think we watched five. Um, <laughs> so we sat there on the couch and she kept saying to me, oh, you're still here. <laughs> I think she forgot that I was still there. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm still here. And today she went off to her day program. They have the day um, off tomorrow. So tomorrow that we'll be alone again. And I was thinking about making her 
a hamburger and hot dog. Um, it's rainy here, so it's not like we can go to the ward picnic, which they do have every year. Plus, I don't know that she can walk to the ward picnic, so um, we might need to take my car. And she, it depends. On her days off, she likes to sleep late, so um, I, I, the ward picnic's in the morning, so we don't ever usually make it. All right, so I'm gonna put the uh, the bathing suit on, but then I just realized I forgot the tummy. So here is the little bit for the tummy, you see. It's not a perfect circle, but it's gonna fit there. So let's go ahead and give it some glue. Not a whole lot, but do remember the edges because you do want it to press down firmly. And when you um, have a lot of layers, like in this case, then sometimes if you don't get the edges, it will like lift, okay? So now that I did the tummy, I can go ahead and put on his little bathing suit. Isn't it cute? All right, so there's a bathing suit and then our little thing is gonna go right there, but let's attend to the face. So we've got this little muzzle part, gonna go there. And then I've got these little pieces for the ears. I think this one goes here. And then this one goes there. They're not exactly the same. Um, and then here is our nose. And then there'll be this last piece here. So let's go ahead and work on the muzzle. Yeah, so um, uh, my family is all, and they're all together, which I'm like, mm. Teresa took um, her and her friend up to Bretton Woods where it's a ski area in New Hampshire but um it it's great in the summertime because it's just like a lot of hiking and outdoor events and uh, things like that and um and so she's staying there for a few days and in the meantime she took Owen up to New Hampshire sort of halfway to my sister's house my sister, as you guys know, lives on the Canadian border in a place called the Great North Woods. And that is where Owen is going to be spending his summer. He was really excited to go. I was a little anxious, but I'll tell you, I'm, I'm getting used to the idea. It's just weird when you spend so much time. Look at this, isn't it cute? You spend so much time thinking about somebody and working around their schedule. And then all of a sudden they're a grown up and you have to come up with a a better plan for what you're going to do. I, I've been facing this for a couple of months now since he is a junior and going into a senior year. Like, what am I gonna do when this kid wants to go off <laughs> to the world? Now, um, I was thinking, you know, wouldn't it be cute if we put some uh, pop dots on this side? So if you don't know what pop dots are, they basically are, that's what I call them. They're basically these foam squares. So um, they have double-sided adhesive on them. So let's go ahead, because this would be like sort of in front of him, right? It wouldn't be flat against his body. So anyway, so last night they called me and they were like, oh, we're all in Bretton Woods having dinner. And I was like, boo-hoo, <laughs> you know, poor me. But it was fun to spend time with my mom too. So, uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie, that was fun um to do and uh she likes ice my mother is a huge dairy fan oh my god she likes anything dairy um almost to like kind of a gross extent sometimes I've seen her eat like sour cream out of the tub and I'm like eek um but so at the end I made her like uh, first we did Klondike bars but then she wanted to have this uh kind that my sister bought for her which was dark chocolate dark cherry chocolate it was so good um it took a while to get used to it oh it wants to go to another state for college oh my god i uh, i know what am i gonna do if he wants to i i think luckily he really likes home um and so he's gonna stick around close to home but this was his like first thing away now isn't that a just so cute and then all we have to do is fix it i like it with the pop dots because it just kind of gives that 
more of a dimensional look there. And then we can go ahead and glue this on. Now you notice I didn't put any glue on the either side of this because um, the glue is just gonna was gonna just be on the face. But I'm gonna turn it around and go ahead and put glue on the back. And then we're gonna come up and I'm gonna show you about fonts. So it, if you were like me um, and a lot of people, like uh, we love fonts. There's all kinds of fonts out there. And Cricut has done a very good job, I think, of adding fonts to Design Space. And um, most of them are free if you are a Cricut Design Space uh, subscriber. You know, you need to, uh, if you never, don't know too much about Design Space, the thing is that it is uh, a paid subscription, but you, it's free to use, but if you want to use all the extra features, you have to pay for it, which I think works out pretty good. Um, and they have a lot of fonts. So let's go up here just so that you can see, but what if you can't find the proper font or you're like me and you wanted a very specific font um, with like when we were were doing those haunted happenings I needed to have um a font from let's see here we go I'm gonna go to Etsy because a lot of times people will turn to Etsy now there are places to get free fonts um I've shown you those before but I want to show you from Etsy and so that you can see how that works I don't know why I've got all of these uncensored business things there but let's say uh, here's a good example uh Dunkin Donuts is a huge uh, huge uh business here because it was it was created in massachusetts so i'm going to type in duncan donuts font okay and i do hit this duncan donuts font and i look here and you can see that there are a number of people offering fonts for Dunkin' Donuts and also uh, images they've done them all for you or you can just buy the font um, so depending on what you want for like around a dollar fifty, you can buy yourself a font that you can use over and over again. So in this case, let's say here is one that has all the letters. And then also we've got one, two, three, four. We've got, we've got five, six, seven, eight. We got about eight different images as well as the font. So if we're going to buy this one, um, and let's see, I don't want to buy this particular one because uh, let's just buy this one because it has just the font, okay? And it's 91 cents. So let's go ahead and hit add to cart. And then I'm going to say view cart and check out, right? You see that? Now I go and I'm going to pay for this by PayPal. So I pay for PayPal. And you have to pay for it in some cases. So I figured I'll let you, let you know that. So I'm going to pay 91 cents for this font. And I hit continue. And then I hit place my order. Once my order is placed, it takes, uh, on Etsy, it takes a minute or so. But once I uh, my order is placed, you can see we sent the re receipt. Now I'm going to go back to this We'll just hit save order. Nope, that didn't work. All right, so I need to go to the order number. How do I do that? All right, I think I have to sign in. <laughs> this isn't even, I don't know who this person is. That's not me. All right, so let's just hit continue with Google, and I can use my misread it to the rescue one, and it probably is going to be, let's see. Did I? Oh, uh, look at the Blues Brothers. <laughs> I was thinking, oh, my my son would like that Blues Brothers. So um, I'm going to go to purchases and see where my purchases are. So here are some purchases that I made. And it's under my misread it to the rescue. Okay, so here is an example of a font. Not the exact font that we just bought. But this one's uh, Ray Dunn. Do you know Ray Dunn? My sister absolutely adores Ray Dunn images. So I'm going to, I bought this. And it says included one file. So I hit download files. And I make sure I download it. Okay, 
Now, once it's downloaded, I have to go to my download file. This is different than if you are in Design Space and you're uploading an image because it's a font. Okay, so let's hit download. And we're going to look for our brand new download, which is called Colby Bry Farmhouse Font. Okay, you see this? And you'll see when you pull this down that there are a number of choices. And you might be saying, um, oh, no problem. You might be saying, uh, oh, which one do I download? Well, you'll, if you look at all of these, you'll notice, first of all, there, there are some that have these just DXF, EPF, PNG. These are just images, SVG even. Okay, those are just images. But if you go down a little bit further, you'll see this SVG. But I don't want to use it as SVG because I want to be able to type in my own font. Okay, so I'm going to keep keep scrolling and then you'll see here I have it in bold um, and it says OTF and then TTF. So what's the difference? TTF the TTF stands for true type font and then the OTF is another older version. So I always do true, true type fonts when I'm given the chance and you'll see it comes in both skinny and bold. So I'm going to hit on the TTF bold right here. Now I just have to click on it and you'll notice that I get this little um, pop up. Um, so here we go. There's a pop up. It says farmhouse bold. And so I'm going to choose install font. Now I do already have it, I think. So I'm really surprised it's, it downloaded it, but here it is. There is the farmhouse skinny font. And let's go back to our download. Whoops. Let's go to the download and we'll choose, uh, we'll choose, I think we already did skinny. So why aren't we doing the bold? I want to do the bold. There it is, bold. And then I'm going to choose install font. Now, once I've done this and it's on your computer, and this is how you need to think about fonts. Fonts are different than images you uploaded into Design Space, okay? They are just different. So if you're a font fiend and you downloaded a bunch of fonts that you really like, maybe some you paid for, but then your computer dies and you have to get a new one, you have to purposefully go back and add those fonts because they're system fonts. They're not part of the cloud okay so here I've done farmhouse font now if I wanted to add text to a new font that I added it may take a while for it to sort of convert over so I want to just check and see so I'm going to choose text again you see and I'm going to go up here to font and I can go here to system and it was called farmhouse, right? So I'm gonna look for the farmhouse one or I can do search. So I'll just do search farmhouse, okay? So there's my farmhouse, single layer, quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. I'm going to go ahead and bookmark it because that's one I paid for and I wanna make sure that it shows up on my bookmarked area. So let's just go ahead and look for that again under bookmark so we'll just type farmhouse and see did it come up under yes it did it came up under bookmarked and then I just choose this font and I have the new font okay so there you go uh oh there you go let's see did it work yes it did and then if you wanted it to be uh, in writing, but it's coming up as not writing. So sometimes when you buy a font, it's just for cutting. So in this case, this was just for cutting. Now, if I want to change it to writing, I would then go up here, you see, and I would choose instead of style, because right now only bold is listed here. So I'm going to go to operation and I'm going to choose pen. Now watch what my, my image does. So I'm going to hit pen. You see, it turned itself into bubble letters. That's because this particular font that I purchased for whatever 99 cents doesn't come in a writing style. Now if this bothers you so badly there are ways around it.
I, I don't have time to go through that right now, but there are ways around bubble text. But the simplest way around the bubble text is to just have it have it written out in the pen and then just fill in the letters with a matching color pen. I've done this before. But be careful when you buy fonts because sometimes fonts don't look so good when they are in the writing format, okay? So that is, that is today, you're, you know, if you're just learning how to do this, you're probably today, you're, today's year old. And then if you don't want to pay for fonts, you can also go over to D-A-F-O-N-T dot dot com. Now, um, right? So you, these are all free, by the way, at least there are demos that are free. So you could fall into a rabbit hole of fonts coming to this site. And if you're a person, you're like, oh, I'm very, very specific about my font, then I would recommend this, but you have to do a few extra steps and looking for things. And this is free. So you may not find exactly what you want. So if you're looking for something exactly what you want, I would go to Etsy. But if you're sort of flexible about it and you just kind of want to look at, all right, what are some vintage images or vintage fonts? And you can look different. Uh, right up here, there's all these little basic script, ding mat. This is old school. Let's look at old school. Yeah, these are really old school fonts. And all you would do here is like this one is called Rain Key. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see this is a downloadable font. And it shows you what it looks like each letter is going to look like. Now, remember, these are cut fonts, cut images. So it's not going to look the same if you do it for writing. But if you want to like say cut out something with vinyl, this would be perfect, right? In this image. So then once I find what I like, I'm going to go over here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, you'll see download. So I can click on the download. And again, you need to go to your download file. So let's go on over to our download file. You might need to refresh it if you've seen that. And ours is called Rain Key, right? So here it is. And you'll see it comes with Read Me Text. And these are just files that will tell me, all right, how I can use. This is a demo font, it's for personal use. If you need it for commercial, use an appropriate license. So this is not really an angel font. An angel font or an angel image would be like use anywhere you want as long as you're using your own creative. So that's not what I want um, necessarily or that's not what I need necessarily um, because I don't sell with the large market, okay? And then you'll see here, I only have the choice of TTF. So when you're downloading files, remember, it can be either OTF or TTF, and you you can choose between the two. There's not much difference, to be honest, and TTF is generally the standard, but some people still also have the OTF. All right, so there's our TTF. We click on it and we see, oh, look at that. It looks really cool and I'm gonna hit install font, okay? And then if you go to a user place, you can see these are all my installed fonts. For some reason, I installed all these. Look at this one, that one's really cute. I don't even know, I don't even remember installing them. And again, it could be a rabbit hole to go down. Um, Okay, and then the other person, another person is saying uh, there is a site called Creative Fabrica um, it, that I, I, I've i shopped from too. You have to be, let's go to it. It's called creativefabrica.com. Now you have to be uh, getting this for free or you might, um, it's like a, it's a subscription service. So in this case, um, it says here, you can have all access, let's go here, 
See this creative fabrica? This will overwhelm you if you are new, okay? So I'm just giving you this warning. Sites like Creative Fabrica, and there are different sites, but they will overwhelm you and they'll say, okay, for $5 a month, you can have all these graphics. But look at how many graphics there are. I mean, there are 131,000 fonts. Um, and there's unlimited access to almost 7 million images. And a lot of them are sublimation images, which we haven't even gotten into that, but some of you are already into that. So for instance, I have to have this, right? And it says upgrade now. I don't want to upgrade. They always want me to upgrade. Um, but let's say I want to have this, which is called the pink vibes duo which has these lovely hearts in the middle then i would hit download because i already have an account with them but you do have to establish an account some of the stuff is free some of it is not some of it is a monthly uh, cost to you so there you go okay um and that is our project for today now tomorrow because it's going to be wet and whatever i was thinking that i would come on and do a fourth of july uh box card that i have been wanting to do actually for years so i want to show you which one it is so i'm going to go to svg cuts now this will be a bonus uh a bonus image that if you don't want to buy it you just want to come because i'm going to do the morning class if you don't want to buy it but you you just want to come you can certainly do that this is a paid image so i'm going to go to box cards and i want to show you where is it this one it's called summer box card svg kit and just so you can see there's a there's a birthday one and then there's this house one that looks so much like a New England house that I have to make it. So this is what we're going to make tomorrow. Yeah, so um, so if you own this, you can put this together with me. Or you can just come and watch it and decide for yourself, do you want to purchase um, these designs? SVG Cuts has a lot of really beautiful box cards. And they're quite intricate and um, really interesting. The other website that I thought I would mention is my old favorite, uh, Lori Whitlock. It, her website is shop, S-H-O-P dot Lori Whitlock dot com. And she is having a 50% off sale right now. So there are some images here, some are brand new. I will apologize up front. Her website's super slow. She's got a lot going on on this site, um, but everything's 50% off. And I generally buy images when they're 50% off from her because it's the best time to get it. And I was thinking about actually getting this, I think it's this, this summer fun box card. Um, but I, I'm going to look around because that's what I do. And I often will buy stuff from her when it's on sale. So tomorrow um, it will be a bonus class. And we're going to do, as I said, we'll do the, um, where is it? We'll do this really adorable box card that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. And it is like basically a house dressed up for the 4th of July. I just really love that. All right, so I will see you again tomorrow at 9, and we'll do this, and then I will be back on Wednesday, and then I'll have Thursday off, and I'll be back on Friday as well. So if you are, um, if you are off this week and you want to have some fun times, please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you will get notified. When you subscribe, you get notified of um of the uh the live video and you don't have to make it to the live video but generally speaking on the fourth of july in the morning nobody really does anything do they they wait until the afternoon when they can barbecue and drink and then light fireworks so i think we'll have a fun time with this um all right everybody uh thank you so much and also i i want to say a belated happy canadia can canadia happy canada day why isn't it canadia day canadian canadian day can canada day <laughs> canada day
<laughs> I know. I love to do um I love to do live videos too because it's fun. I can interact with you guys. All right. So if you're not gonna come tomorrow, have a happy fourth of July. If you're from Canada, happy Canada Day, which was yesterday, Saturday. Um and otherwise I'll see you tomorrow when we do this box card from SVG Cuts. All right. Have a great day, everyone. Uh, even if it's raining, have some fun. I'm actually going to clean because now that everybody's out of the house, I have no excuse not to clean my house. <laughs> Isn't that weird? So this summer, Owen's going to be having fun in New Hampshire, getting dirty and doing fun stuff, and I'm going to be cleaning. So how do you like that, right? So anyway, thanks so much for coming today. I hope you enjoyed this adorable card and that you try different ones. And if you do, make sure you share them with me if you're on Facebook um, or even on Instagram because I am on Instagram and uh, so I can see how your card turned out. Okay? Thank you, everybody. I know you guys are getting killed in, t in Texas. Isn't that awful? Oops. You're getting killed in Texas and other places as well. But, whoops, sorry, I moved my thing. And so Benji's here telling me it's time to get off, Mom. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.